Hey guys, welcome to my October favorites video. I feel like I've just been making a lot of videos lately, just kind of rattling off like all my favorite products. We have the Sephora holiday savings event. We have the Beautylish gift card event. Um, I just talked about some of my favorite holiday sets. So I, I really didn't want this to be, you know, just kind of like a rehash of all of that. So this is probably going to be a little bit brief and I will leave links to those videos down below if you want to hear about some of my other favorites. Um, I will repeat some things in here if they're just like blatant outstanding favorites, um, but I am going to try and be not as repetitive. So if you're new to my uh, favorites videos, what I like to do is film myself putting on as much of it as I can and I'll just throw that b-roll in and talk about it so that you're able to see the products in action. I think that's pretty helpful and I've gotten uh, pretty good feedback from that. So uh, that's what you'll see and that's what I'll be doing in this video. I do have again as much of it as I can on my face. So let's start with foundation. So one foundation that I did mention in the Beautylish uh, gift card event recommendations video, so I won't linger too long on this, is the By Terry uh, Terribly Dense List Foundation. This is their anti-wrinkle serum foundation, and I mix it with their brightening CC serum. So this foundation is a serum foundation. It feels really, really gorgeous on the skin. It has a really nice lotion type texture, and it just feels really great on the skin. And the shade that I have is 3 Vanilla Beige. It has a wonderful undertone for me. I really like the neutral undertone, um, but it is a little bit light, which is why I mix it in with the Brightening CC Serum in Sunny Flash, but I'll get to this in just a second. So I love like the coverage of this foundation. It has a light medium, uh, coverage, especially when you mix it in with something else. A light medium coverage with one layer. I feel like when I put two layers on, I get pretty close to like a medium, like a solid medium coverage. Um, so I do like that about foundation. And another thing, if you're new here, I really like kind of like a light medium coverage foundation. I like when you can kind of see like peaks of my skin coming through. So perfect for me. And I have really dry skin. So I found this foundation just very non-drying. It didn't look dry on my skin at all. It just felt really comfortable on the skin but it also isn't too radiant where I felt like I really had to like tamp it down with some um, powder or anything like that. It just had a really nice uh, skin-like finish with like a touch of radiance and when I threw the By Terry Brightening CC Serum in there this is like a liquid like a tinted liquid highlighter so there's a bunch of different shades from By Terry. This is probably yeah I think this one is like the bronziest and this I love to use you know, on its own, if I am bronze myself or I want to look a little bit more bronze, I use this. Um, I use it in foundations that need a little bit of deepening up. Um, so I pump like one pump of the foundation to one pump of the Brightening CC Serum. And it is, oh, it's so beautiful. This really just gives your skin like this really beautiful, radiant, like all over glow. It just makes your skin look silky. It's gorgeous. So I really, really like this combination. And the foundation I have on today is not a new foundation. The, the By Terry is not a new foundation either. These are just sort of new discoveries for me. But the Clay de Poe, and what is the full name? The Clay de Poe Radiant Cream to Powder Foundation. Now, as I just said, I have dry skin. I like light medium coverage. I like uh, skin like but like slightly radiant kind of finish. And so when this like cushion style, it's not really a cushion foundation, but a cushion style foundation came out, I read the name of it, Radiant Cream to Powder Foundation, and I was like, nope, not for me. So I just passed on it. A bunch of you asked if I was going to be reviewing it, and I said, no, I don't think it's for me. And many of you purchased it and recommended it to me. And I still was resistant. Again, I don't usually use like cream uh, type of foundation. I really prefer like liquid foundations. That's really what I'm comfortable with. So cream foundations I wasn't comfortable with. And then the fact that it was always like a two powder <laughs> type of foundation and I have dry skin, I was like, guys, I really, I just, I don't think it's for me. Anyway, I broke down and purchased this from Nordstrom. I should have listened to you guys. This is amazing. Not only is it easy to put on, it just requires a dry sponge. So I don't even need to go and wet my sponge. I take my Sonia Kashuk sponge, where is she? This Sonia Kashuk sponge, which you'll see in the B-roll here. And again, I don't even need to wet it. I'll take any edge of it and I'll just kind of dig it into the foundation. It spreads so, so easily. It looks, I mean, I think it looks flawless on the skin and it wears beautifully. It's definitely long wearing. And if I did see any like fading, 
it faded beautifully. It was very graceful in its fading. It didn't like like patch up or it didn't kind of like flake up or you know it doesn't it doesn't like roll up or anything. I am so impressed with this foundation and again I am not a fan generally of like cream foundations, foundations that come in like a pan basically. I find that they're either too emollient, like they're too greasy, or they just are really high coverage. This one is incredible. It's incredible. I don't find that it's too high coverage. So you can still see my major sunspots there. So the coverage is like a light medium, definitely buildable. You can just kind of like tap on a little extra layer or whatever. It's incredible. I love it. It feels like nothing on the skin. It's completely weightless. It's everything I didn't think a cream foundation would be. You know, I always think of it too, just by looking at it, I think, oh, it's going to be so heavy on the skin. It's going to be thick. It's probably going to clog my pores. You know, all these things that I like made up in my head. This one is impeccable and I have it in the shade 020. So that's the shade that I think works really well for me. So it's just a great all around foundation. Like even if you want to throw this into your bag, it's not going to spill. It's not going, it's not powder. So it's not going to like break up and coat stuff. So anyway, I have been loving, loving this foundation. I think it is fantastic. Okay, let's move on to concealer. I actually have three to talk about. The By Terry Terribly Densely uh, Concealer, I did talk about this in the Beautylish gift card event recommendation video. So again, I'm not going to talk about this for too long, but this is their Anti-Wrinkle Dark Circle Eye Bag Serum Corrector. I have it in the shade 2 Vanilla Beige, and on my complexion, it's a nice brightening shade. What I love about this concealer is that it's very, very lightweight, and it really is like a serum. So it blends in really beautifully. It blends in very easily but it doesn't have a lot of coverage. So if you're looking for heavy, like high coverage concealer, this is not for you. I like that it's on the lighter side. It works really well with lighter coverage foundations, which I like. So I really enjoy this one. So this is like a long ago love. When I started my channel years ago, I was using this concealer and really, really enjoying it. So I hadn't repurchased it since then until just recently. And it's, it's wonderful. I really enjoy it. The other one, which same thing as the By Terry, I used it a lot when I first started my channel and then, you know, just kind of moved on, tried other concealers, never really repurchased it, but repurchased it recently. And like, oh, I love this concealer. This is the Chanel. I think it's the long wear concealer. Yes, I think it's the long wear concealer. Anyway, I'll leave a link to it down below in the description box, but I have the shade 20 beige and this one has like a gel base to it. So I would say this has higher coverage than the By Terry for sure, but it has uh, like a similar kind of like very lightweight uh, consistency. So it just goes on and it blends really, really easily. This I think is even a little bit thinner than the Chanel, but the Chanel is still very lightweight. It's not one of those kind of like heavy, tacky kind of concealers. It smooths out your under eyes. It just looks fantastic. So I've been loving this, but again, this has like a little bit higher of a coverage than by Terry, but I wouldn't say this has like high coverage. This is like medium, medium high coverage. The last concealer I want to talk about is something that's new to me. Another product that I have been really wanting to try, but just never ended up purchasing, but I bought it at the same time. I bought the Clay de Peau foundation and that is the Sicily eye concealer with botanical extracts. And I have it in the shade number one. This, again, not new, something I've been wanting to try, and so I bit the bullet. I had heard very, very good things about it. I love Sicily products, and it has this wonderful, wonderful cooling, like, metal tip, which you can just kind of, like, run under your eyes if you want to, like, depuff a little bit, and the product comes out right at the top there. It also comes with a little brush. Oh my god, I'm surprised I haven't lost it. Here's the little brush comes with a little brush. I don't really use that. I prefer to use either my finger or a larger brush just to kind of speed up the whole process of blending it in. But this has very high coverage. And this shade number one has like a little bit of a peachiness to it. So if you do have like a deeper, darker um, circle situation going on under your eyes, I believe this will do like a nice correction on top of concealing. So that's really nice. But it is great for those days where I'm feeling like I'm looking really tired. And for a concealer with such high coverage, I am surprised at how easily it blends in, how flawlessly it blends in as well. It's really 
surprising. And because I'm someone that generally likes lighter, light, medium type coverage, base products, foundation, concealer, or whatever, I was really surprised at how much I like this high coverage concealer because it just doesn't it doesn't behave like a high coverage concealer. It wears really well. It doesn't make my under eyes look dry at all. It doesn't look cakey at all. I also don't feel like I necessarily need to be that careful with it. So it's not one of those concealers that has like, like that trickiness to it where I feel like a lot of high coverage con concealers, I have to be a little bit careful with the application. I have to like kind of go in slowly. Otherwise it just kind of cakes up. This is really flawless. So I've been very impressed with this. Again, another product that you guys have been raving about. <laughs> and talking about and urging me to purchase and I finally did it and no regrets no regrets at all so that is the Sicily eye concealer with botanical extracts I have one powder to mention and that is the Guerlain La I think it's the Voilette powder um, I have it in the shade 2 Claire and this is the loose powder that smells like their meteorites it has that violet scent that I love and many of you told me that I needed to get this if I liked violet scents um, I think they even have like a pressed powder version, but I was really intrigued by the loose powder. So I purchased this one uh, from Nordstrom along with like the Clay de Peau and the Sisley. It's a really good shopping day. But I'm not sure, is this powder, <laughs> you guys let me know down below if you have any news on this. Is this powder like being discontinued? Because I feel like if I do find it on the site, there's like low stock or not the entire shade range or it's sold out or, or it's just not on a lot of sites. I don't know why they would discontinue this because, well, one, I love the violet scent. And if you like violet scents, you would love this. If you like that fragrance, you would really love this. And I think it does such a beautiful job. It's a really beautiful powder. It is a powder that I feel like if I go a little heavy handed with it, I do look a little bit too matte and dry for my taste. So if you have oily skin, I think this would work well for you. If you have dry skin like me, I think you need to just be pretty like gentle with your application. I just don't use a lot of it. A little bit of this powder, I think, goes a long way. So it really sets down my makeup well, but I, again, so long as I don't use too much, I feel like it leaves my skin looking really natural. It's letting kind of like the radiance come through. It doesn't look dry or anything. So I've really been enjoying this and it's like, Oh, it's like aromatherapy every time I open up this uh, powder. As for bronzer, another Guerlain product, and I'm surprised at how much I like this. So this is the bronzer that is part of their holiday collection, their Golden Bee collection. This is their holiday tin. I love the Guerlain products and I do use them, but I do purchase a lot of it kind of as like the collector in me, like, oh, I like the holiday collection, it's special, blah, blah, blah. A lot of their bronzers in the past have been a little bit too deep, a little bit too warm, or have a little bit too much of a sheen. And so I kind of expected that for this one. I kind of expected it to be a bronzer that I used a couple of times, but you know, that I ended up collecting. But this bronzer is a gorgeous tone. I don't know if you guys can see that through the pan. I do have it applied to my face, but it has like a really, you know, warm undertone which is great, but it's a little bit more peachy versus orange. So I feel like it looks really natural on the skin and it does have quite a golden sheen in the pan. But when I put it on my face, I just feel like I look a little bit more radiant. I don't feel like I put like a gold highlighter over my bronze. I just feel like it's just giving me like a little bit of radiance. So I love this. I love this bronzer. It does have their terracotta scent, which I associate with the summer. So it's always very interesting that they use it as part of the holiday collection, but they do usually add the terracotta scent to their bronzing products. So anyway, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think it's a beautiful bronzer. I think for my skin tone, it does a nice job just doing a little bit of bronzing. It's not too, too crazy. So really been enjoying that. And as for blush and highlight, the Wayne Goss um, Weightless Veil Blush Palette in Vivid Azalea. I love it. I have both the blush and the highlight on today. This has just been my go-to. This has just been sitting right here. I try and, as you guys know, I try and rotate through my makeup. I don't really have like an everyday makeup drawer or anything like that. I like to go through my collection and try and use like a different product every day. But this one, I love this. It's like I have to tear myself away from this if I'm using a different blush. I mean, I have plenty of other beautiful favorite blushes, but this one really has been just my favorite. I mean, that's what we're talking about, right? This really has been my favorite for, you know, ever since I got this. I just, 
I think of this color. Like I love, love this color. It's so eye-catching in the pan. It's so beautiful to look at. And then on the cheeks, I mean, I really don't need a lot. I just dip my brush in once and I kind of brush it over both of my cheeks and then maybe I go in one more time and that's it. It is a very bold color. And I do think this would work on a whole range of different skin tones. You just use a little bit more or a little bit less, but the color itself is so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. It adds that brightness that I need in my life. It's so beautiful. And then the highlight is just gorgeous. The highlight has this like white gold appearance to it, but there's just a hint of this peachy undertone. I love it. They apply beautifully. They blend out beautifully. They're just, they're just gorgeous. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And a couple of other highlighters I've been enjoying. I mentioned the Charlotte Tilbury and the Natasha Denona, the two newer highlighters. I mentioned that in my Sephora uh, holiday savings event uh, recommendations video. So I'm not really going to dwell too much on that. But the one that I have not talked about that I I really enjoy is this By Terry Twinkle Glow CC Highlighter. This is probably, yeah, this is probably the newest one, but I really, really enjoy it. So I swatched it next to the Natasha Denona just to give you a little bit of a comparison here. So this is the By Terry and this is the Natasha Denona. So the Natasha Denona is, as you can see, much whiter and brighter than the By Terry. The formulas are also pretty different. The By Terry is like a soft, creamy powder. So this is a baked product. So you can really kind of like shear this out and um, build it up if you want. This one goes on a little bit more in a creamy, opaque way, but it kind of buffs out really beautifully. But I really like the option of this By Terry highlight because it's just a little bit warmer, as you can see. And so the highlight that you get isn't quite as like stark looking. And it's nice. It's a little bit more natural, <laughs> as natural as a highlight can be. It's a little bit more natural on my skin tone than something like this. It's just so much whiter and brighter. But, I, you know, I love highlights. So there is the occasion for sure. There is the occasion for something like this Natasha Denona. But I really have been enjoying this uh, By Terry Twinkle CC highlighter. This packaging is just gorgeous. It is holiday ready. All right, let's move into eyeshadows and let's talk about what I have on my eyes because I wanted to mention this in my Sephora recommendations video. Um, but when I went, before I started filming, I went to check the Sephora site and this product wasn't listed on there. So I was like, oh darn, I really thought it was there. I don't know if I missed it or what, but anyway, my video went live. I went onto the Sephora site and there it was. And I was like, what in the heck? So anyway, it is the Tom Ford First Frost Quad. This came out with the Soleil Neige collection for 2020. And it is what I have on my eyes. I have the pinky gold shade over most of my lid and then I have the lighter brown uh, on the outer corners and I just I just love how simple it is to create a really polished look. I just have those two shadows on. I used the same brush for both. I used my Sony G Worker One brush. You can use any kind of brush, really, any kind of like blender brush. And I just love it. I just love it. I love this entire quad. I love all four of the shades. I love this formula, as you guys know, that wet dry Tom Ford formula, I think is so beautiful. And yes, it looks totally basic, but I just think it's so beautiful. And this pink shade is, oh, it's just, it's stunning. Like the duochrome, in the pink between like this coolish pink and this kind of like white gold. It's beautiful. And I really have been reaching for this quite a bit. Um, I've been loving the Dior Quince. I mentioned that in my Sephora recommendations video, the soft cashmere in particular. Again, I don't want to be too repetitive, but I did mention those and I do love those. Um, and when it comes to Pat McGrath, this definitely was not on the Sephora site. Otherwise, I would have mentioned this in my Sephora recommendations video, but this is one of her new quads, and this is in Floor Fantasia. This one is by far my favorite eyeshadow palette that she came out with for the holiday collection, including the Celestial Divinity, which is the big, the large one, the one with, eight, is it 18 pans? Yeah, 18 pans. So this is like the pastel one with the lavender and the pink. I just think the shades in here are really beautiful. I think I can create a complete look out of the four shades in this where I don't, I can with the other four quads, but I don't feel as comfortable with it. I feel like I kind of want to go into another palette and like use a color to blend out some of the shades. Um, but with this one, I just feel like it's so pretty and it's so like holiday too, even though it's pastel-y, which 
to me is typically for spring, but I feel like I see kind of like a winter wonderland, candy land kind of vibe with this. I think it's so unique for Pat McGrath. She really usually uses very bold, bright colors. Like all of her statement colors in her Mothership palettes are really bold. Like the blue one in Subliminal, the green one in Sublime. She has these really bold pops of color in her palettes. Um, even her Decadence palette, which is all uh, those shiny metallics. Those are all like real jewel tones, real gemstone type of shades. And then there's this one, which is just this very light, pretty, like fairy-like quad. And I really enjoy it. I love how it's unique for Pat McGrath. I love that it's in a quad. If I had to pick over really large palettes and smaller palettes, I really like smaller eyeshadow palettes. They're just much more convenient. And to me, they're just easier to use because you just don't have as many options. So this one I am loving. And like I said, I think the other two new quads are on Sephora, but not this one. I don't know why. So anyway, I did purchase this off of the Pat McGrath site, which is where it's available. And for mascara, I have really been loving this Surat Noir Lash Tint. And I can't, I can't even remember if I mentioned this in my last favorites. I think I got it actually afterwards. Anyway, I really love it. This is the mascara that has a wand with no bristles. This is the one that looks like a screw at the end. So it just has threading that catches the actual mascara in there. And it just lays it onto your lashes and... I love it. It makes my lashes look just a bit more volumized. I don't like too much volume where it looks too clumpy. So it makes them, it just defines like each lash nicely, keeps the curl in my lashes. It makes them longer. I do feel like that is probably its best quality is that it makes my lashes look a little bit longer. It does also stay on all day beautifully. It does make it a little bit harder at night to remove but it does stay on beautifully. So now that I'm talking about this mascara, I do feel like I've talked about this in my last month's favorite. So I'm gonna move on. Let's talk about lip products. So I just did like a roundup of a lot of the luxury lipsticks that I've been playing around with over the past month or so. And that, that footage, um, I was editing it. It was such a long video and I had been editing it for hours. And right at the end, for some reason, the audio just cuts out. It's like the last third of the video, the audio cuts out. And there was no, I fussed with it probably for a couple of hours trying to figure out if I could re-import the footage because it was on my actual footage. It was just in the importing of it. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I talked about a lot of lipsticks in that video. So I'll leave a link to that one down below as well. Um, but I did want to talk about some lip products that I was using for the first time in that video and mention them here in this favorites because they are incredible. And I'm talking about the Lisa Eldridge glosses. <sighs> These are amazing. I have one on my lips today and I did put this on right before I started filming and I have the shade um, Muse on. So this is like, you know, an everyday shade for me. It's like a neutral, cool, leaning, kind of like mauve color. Anyway, it goes on like a like a really nourishing feeling gloss. It has just enough pigment. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's like right in the middle. But I just want you to see my lips. Now that this gloss has been on for about an hour, look, it's like a mask. Look at how smooth and like juicy my lips look. My lips do not normally look like this. <laughs> it is amazing. So she talks about how the glosses have a combination of butters and oils and how she really wanted it to be like a lip care type of product. And wow, I mean, she knocked it out of the park. I just can't believe how smooth my lips look. I incredible, incredible gloss. So very, very happy with these, all of these, all of these different shades. I think, unfortunately, a lot of these are sold out at the moment. I can't imagine her not restocking these. I mean, she, this is a gift to the world. She, she needs to make these available all the time and expand on the shade range because they, they're just stunning. They're absolutely gorgeous. And the other lipsticks I uh, was playing with for the first time in that video are the House of Siage, the new nudes collection. I have really been enjoying this tender tone color and I have it in the pink flower like the whispers um, case which I just love I think it's so pretty this is tender tone I just swatched it right here and I remember like you know swatching all of them and I just kind of kept thinking like which one's my favorite which one's my favorite which one would I go for and I love I just love this tender tone this is the one that I've been gravitating towards it's just such a beautiful like slightly peach nude color and it's it's really beautiful it's just it's one of those like perfect nudes so I've been enjoying that and the House of Siage formula for their lipsticks they're 
really like they're kind of balmy and so they just feel really like almost like you're putting on a lip balm and they have a slight kind of fragrance they use diamond powder in here so there's this like really subtle subtle sheen they're just gorgeous so i'm so happy that they came out with this whole nudes collection i'm definitely gonna have to like swap out this refill and like kind of play around with some of the other ones but this is the one that i've just really been going hard with and just a couple more things but i did talk about these in that lipstick roundup video these are the by rado lipsticks and there are two that i have just been again going hard with but the earth dust shade this is another just another one of those nudes that i love so you can see it's a little bit deeper than the house of siage it's also a little bit cooler in tone a little less peachy and this is one of their satin formulas so it's just really comfortable on the lips it looks beautiful on the lips it has really high pigmentation so it's one of those like one swipe lipsticks and you're pretty much good to go and i just love it it's easy to use comfortable there's no fragrance that i can detect and i love it i love the color really and the packaging is so great so that one and also la flame which is a matte formula and that is la flame i i just i love it i love it i'm definitely going to be wearing this a bit more come like the winter months because it's such a beautiful red it's so great for the holidays and this matte formula, generally I don't like matte formulas. They're a little bit drying. You've all heard the complaints about matte lipsticks, but this one is very, very comfortable. And it doesn't feel too silicone-y either. I feel like matte lipsticks that are quote unquote like comfortable on the lips, they're just full of silicone. So they just kind of like slide right on, but eventually they start to feel a little bit drying on the lips. This feels comfortable and it is matte. There really is no sheen to it at all. And it's just comfortable. It doesn't feel too silicone-y, but it's very comfortable on the lips. So I am very, very happy that I got this color because I wasn't sure at first because I was in love with this color, just wasn't sure about the matte and went for it. And I'm so glad that I did. And then last but not least, I just wanted to mention the Byredo color stick. Now, I these color sticks, um, they come in a whole range of different colors. They're meant to be a product that you can use on your lips, cheeks, and eyes. They do come in different finishes, which they don't really specify, except in the description of the color. So the one that I have, Great Sands, is one that has like a dewy kind of finish, dewy kind of metallic glittery finish. I have noticed, at least in the shades that I purchased, that the dewier the finish is, so this is Great Sands, the dewier the finish the more I like it on my lips, but I don't like it on my cheeks and I don't really like this on my eyes. On my eyes, I just didn't feel like it had much staying power. On my cheeks, it was it was just too tacky, like my hair would kind of get caught in it. But on my lips, it's really, really nice. And then there are ones that have more of a matte kind of finish and those work better on the eyes, um, but were a little bit dry on the cheeks. Like they worked okay on the cheeks, but way too dry on the lips. So for me, it really depends on what formula the color stick is as to like where it's gonna work best on the face. I don't, for me personally, I don't think that all of the color sticks work well on every part of your face. I mean, unless you're trying to do something, you know, editorial or whatever, you can kind of make it work. But for just, you know, all day wear, just someone, you know, me just going about my everyday life, I just don't think every stick works for every part of your face. So I do like this Great Sands on my lips. It's really, really beautiful. It's comfortable. It's kind of balmy feeling. It has this beautiful, beautiful sheen. And there's like little itty bits of micro glitter in there, but nothing too crazy. It's not too chunky at all. It just gives your lips like this little glisten. So it's really pretty. And again, the dewier ones, the dewier color sticks, very comfortable on the lips. All right, so that is it. I'm kind of giggling because I really wanted to make this kind of like short and sweet, and I think this is just as long as my other favorites, but I will leave links to my Sephora recommendations video, my Beautylish recommendations video, and my lipstick roundup video because those videos are good resources for my favorites as well. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.